Anyways, do you guys want to talk about the uh, the the financials for Activision Blizzard quarter one of 2021? Uh, there's there's a lot here. Blizzard have lost almost 29%. Now, obviously, they do go with that number because it's a bigger number. Uh, it's actually like 11 million people that, that Blizzard have lost in the last three years. So that that's pretty big, right? That, that is a pretty huge number. But anyways, let's just quickly go through this article. The article is from Massively Overpowered. And uh, welcome back, my friends. It's time for another Activision Blizzard. I don't know if we can really establish, Bree, that you and I are friends. I've only just met you today. Um... Perhaps hold off on the uh, friendship thing until I get to know you a little better. But anyways, it's time for another Activision Blizzard investor report. And we're expecting this one to be a ride. Uh, readers will recall that it's been a wild couple of years for the company as 2019 saw mass layoffs. Why is this being mentioned? I, I don't understand. Are you just trying to set up the article as being very negative right off the bat? Because, yes, we saw massive layoff, mass layoffs, and you actually reported on it. Everyone knows about this. We know about the Hong Kong uh, boycott thing, um, or the Blitzchung boycott, a weak BlizzCon. That I can actually agree with them plunging year-on-year -year revenues for five straight quarters in May 2019, August 2019, November 2019, and February 2020. May 2020, quarter 1 2020's revenue drop was very slight and close to flattening. And then in quarter 2, year-on-year -year revenues for the company were up for the first time in six quarters quarters thanks to COVID-19 lockdowns. Now, Blizzard and almost every other gaming company did ride the coattails of the lockdowns as people were stuck in their homes trying to look for something to do. Obviously, Blizzard got a lot of attention from that, a lot of people wanting to get in on the action. Quarter 3 saw those revenues hold steady, while quarter 4 saw revenues up 17%, suggesting the company had finally turned a real corner. Despite pretending to investors, everything was fine the whole time. But this time around, the investor report is coming on the heels of massive public relations disasters, such as Activision Blizzard forced yet another round of layoffs and investor groups alleged that CEO Bobby Kotick could pocket as much as $200 million in bonuses. Well, no, 9.1 is, uh, is this really a surprise? Well, King Julian, just hold, hold the phone because it's very easy for you to go, well, clearly we don't have patch 9.1, that's why things are dropping. But you'll see in a second that there's an historical movement away from Blizzard Gaming, which can't be explained by Patch 9.1, because three years ago, Patch 9.1 wasn't a thing. It wasn't even a, a suggestion of a thing. And the player base was still dropping steadily every single year, right? So uh, never look for just a single answer and say, that's the answer, clearly. There, there's a lot more going into this, but we'll get to all of that in a moment. Um, so, obviously, Blizzard had a bunch of fuck-ups, uh, but Blizzard did announce, however, that Bobby Kotick's pay is actually going to be half, his pay and his bonus. Although, I agree with this article, because the article actually does say they're really just trying to soothe investors, right? Uh, this pay cut doesn't mean a lot. It's really for investors. It's not actually meant for the players in any way, shape, or form. Uh, in any case, now we have quarter one's results, which were actually just fine. Better than fine, with revenues of $2.28 billion, a significant increase compared to this quarter last year. Though, of course, this quarter last year wasn't great to begin with. Once again, the moneymakers are Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Candy Crush. This has been true for Blizzard for a long time. And I, I can't help but think having a company as big as Blizzard hitch almost all of its success on a single game that right now is, shall we say, upsetting players. Let's use the word upset. Let's not say that players are pissed off because maybe that would be uh, an over-exaggeration or an exaggeration. Uh, but it, it's clear that Players are not happy with World of Warcraft, and I think if we did a poll right now asking people how they feel about World of Warcraft, um, the vast majority of people would not be happy with it, right? The vast majority of people would not be uh, excited. You can't say D4 or Diablo Immortal are flops or late. Uh, they're definitely not late. They're still coming. Uh, but anyway, so we have... Uh, you can read this if you want. I'll have a link for you guys to this article if you really want to read this. It just goes into share pricing, which really doesn't fucking matter, right? As to Blizzard specifically, the company talks up WoW Classic and World of Warcraft Shadowlands, which apparently drove Blizzard's revenue growth of 7% year on year. Hearthstone appears to be doing well too. Uh, the presser reiterates a global launch for Diablo Immortal this year. 
No one gives a fuck about that. But all right, so Blizzard's segment revenue grew 7% year over year, led by strong growth in Warcraft franchise with World of Warcraft Shadowlands expansion building on the substantial increase in scale seen since the launch of World of Warcraft Classic in 2019. Blizzard had 27 million monthly active users in the first quarter. Now, you'll see how, how this has been going down. World of Warcraft Shadowlands expansion continued to drive strong results following its record-setting release in November, with first quarter franchise net bookings growing sharply year over year. World of Warcraft saw strong reach, engagement, and participation in value-added services, the fucking shop, along with a particularly high number of new players joining the community for the first time, boosted by initiatives to enhance the onboarding experience. All right, so pay attention to the investor language here, right? The sad part of all of this is that there's a constant focus on engagement and reach and participation. And then they say in value-added services, which means not in the game. So they're not seeing a lot of engagement and strong reach within the game. They're seeing it within the value-added services. In other words, there's more things on the shop that a lot of people want to get in on. Uh, there's more things on the shop that people are excited about. Don't give a fuck about Hearthstone. You can look at that for yourself. Do not care about any of the other things here because it's not my cup of tea. As we noted last month, Blizzard continues to lose monthly active users across all of its titles. It's now lost 11 million players in the last three years, or 29%, as measured by Blizzard's own preferred monthly active user count. 2 million of those dried up just since quarter 4, 2020. Brutal. All right, so here you can see it. Back in 2018, quarter 1, Blizzard had 38 million monthly active users. In quarter 2, 37, 37 for quarter 3, 35 for quarter 4, 32, and then it holds steady at 32 for 2 again. You have 33 million, so it slightly ticks up in quarter uh, 3 of 2019, thanks to WoW Classic. Uh, 32 million in quarter 4, the whole Blitzchung thing happened. Then you have 32 million in quarter 1, 32 million in quarter 2, 30 million in quarter 3, 29 million in quarter 4, and 27 million in quarter 1. Does anyone see a pattern? Is their patch cycle how they've been delivering their content? And that's my main reason for them losing subs. King Julian, I don't even think it's that. I don't think it's the patch cycle. It's the shit content in the patch cycle. It's it's fine if we're uh, getting patches late, but those patches are amazing. The problem is if we're getting patches late and those patches are complete dog shit. Like... This is the question that I want to wanna ask each and every one of you in chat right now. I asked this last night, but we'll do it for the video again, just to sort of get a bit of a feel for how chat feels about this. And I want you to answer honestly. How many of you like World Quest? How many of you think World Quest is a good thing? And answer honestly. How many of you don't mind it? You, you do it every day. It's fine. Just yes or no. That's all I want to know. All right. All right, so a lot of you don't mind it. Let's rephrase it. This is how we're going to check how many of you actually like it. If World Quests gave no rewards, zero rewards. In other words, no anima, no gear, nothing. It was just a thing that existed in the fucking game. How many of you would do it? No one would do it, right? Not a single fucking person would do it. Then it is a shit system then it's absolute dog shit. That's how you know whether a system is good or bad. If people will not do it because it's not fun to do, they do it only for the reward, then it's a shit system. 100%. Uh, and Andy, you are wrong. It's not a wrong take. You need to focus on what I'm telling you. You can have games. A game like Oxygen Not Included has zero rewards. There's not a single fucking reward in Oxygen Not Included. It is just a game that you play for hours and hours on end just building your base and trying to solve problems. It doesn't give you shiny shit. It doesn't give you gear. It doesn't give you gold. There's nothing in that game that rewards you for playing the game other than the game being the reward. That's the point I'm making. 
If you remove the reward, the underlying gear must still be amazing. Or the underlying system must still be fun to engage with. Otherwise, what you've done is you wanted to find a way to give players a reward and you found the simplest fucking easiest way to sort of tailgate that or, or gate it so the people don't just get it. At this point, Blizzard may as well just hand out 100 anima every day that you log in because people are literally only doing those things for the anima that they get from it while hating every step of the fucking, uh, of the process and journey to get there. That is the test. So now we can start asking some, now, now we can start asking questions like, imagine if there was no PvP gear, do you think people would still PvP? And the answer is yes. If gear didn't exist and PvP was literally just a taste of skill, PvPers would still go do PvP. Because the fun is literally in the playing. The gear is a good thing and it, it helps you min max, but the gear is not the main driver of the system. The main driver of the system is the physical gameplay loop that you engage with in order to get that gear. You can make an argument for most likely Mythic Plus people as well, right? People who's really into Mythic Plus. Even if you removed the gear, because a lot of people that push very high Mythic Plus keys aren't doing it for the gear because there's a point where gear doesn't go up. They're doing it simply for the fact of pushing those keys. So it's a good system. It's a system that those people enjoy. The same argument could probably be made for raiding. Again, people do it because they want to solve the problems within it. I realize there's some loot whores out there that do it only for the gear. I had some of those people in my fucking, uh, in my guild. I hated every second of it because those are the people that just want to do full clears the whole time. They don't actually want to progress because they don't give a fuck about progression. They don't give a fuck about puzzle solving or problem solving. They just want the shiny loot, the purple pixels. It makes them hard as fuck. Um, but at the end of the day, the way you test whether or not World of Warcraft or any game is a good game you ask yourself if I removed all of the rewards, would I still do it? And if the answer is no, then it's shit. Then it's literal shit. And there's, there's no other way to look at it. It is literal shit. Why is Blizzard losing uh, monthly active users? Because the game is literal shit. And I'm sorry, this is not meant to be an attack on World of Warcraft. I'm not trying to call out Blizzard here. I'm simply... I'm simply speaking the truth. The game is shit. No one does anything in World of Warcraft anymore because it's fun to do. People are doing it because they have to do it for the rewards at the end of the road. And Chorghast is perhaps the best example of this. A system that could be fucking amazing. And the emphasis must be on could be fucking amazing. Is turned into an absolute joke because Blizzard decided... They needed a way to distribute soul ash. Fuck it, we'll make Torghast. And we'll turn it into a chore. And by the way, for anyone that thinks it's going to get better in 9.1, it doesn't. Uh, spoiler alert. It doesn't get better at all. Uh, the way Blizzard should go about, and just so that we're not just criticizing Blizzard here, but we are actually giving uh, what they would call useful feedback. Blizzard, you have to stop designing rewards and start designing systems and gameplay systems that's fun. Balila made a very good point on this during his live stream. I think it was yesterday. Uh, he made a very good point at this. When Ian answered Breach, when Breach asked him about the Mage Tower, Ian made some point and then Ian, uh, Breach said, so basically, once you have a reward, you'll do Mage Tower. And Ian said, yes. What the fuck are you talking about? So the thing that stops you from implementing a system that people have been asking for for a very long time is a reward. You don't have a way to reward players. Why don't you just make the gameplay the reward? That way you don't have to worry about the reward. People will do it because it's fun to fucking do. Do you understand why I'm saying Blizzard is just, they're completely not sure what they're doing. So a good example of this and this is something that we absolutely have to talk about. Torgos gets cosmetic shoulder rewards in patch 9.1. It still does not solve the underlying issue of Torgos Blizzard. Ian, for the love of everything holy, this does not solve the problem. All you're now doing is forcing even more people to fucking do Torgos 
which you've not fixed in 9.1 by the way, you're forcing more people to do Cho'Gast that didn't have to do it before. Because the people that's after these shoulders, right, after all of these shoulders uh, uh, cosmetics, they weren't doing Cho'Gast to begin with because they didn't give a fuck about the legendary. They're casuals that's just collecting stuff. Now suddenly you've told them, hey, you know that thing that you didn't want to do because you kind of hate it and it's not fun? Well, now you're going to go do it because we've just added a bunch of collectibles for you in it. And by the way, we've kept it as unfun as humanly possible to ensure that everyone gets the first shot at fucking hating their life for at least two, three hours a week. Um, and I'm, I'm saying this as someone who actually liked Torghost, uh, but I like Torghost because I was doing it with my friends. I was doing it with Andy. I was doing it with Ferorius, and it was a blast to do. It was sort of fun to get stupid powers and just go as high as humanly possible, see how, how far you can go. I've done Torghost a couple of times alone, and it is boring. When you're doing it alone, there's nothing fun in Torghost. It's literally the most boring gameplay loop you could ever engage in. Uh, just give me more gold so I can buy what I want. I don't even get the man from Torghost. So from, from where I'm sitting... Blizzard has a fundamental either disrespect for their player base or they just don't have a clue. That's what I, that's where I'm coming from. I don't think Blizzard have a clue what their players like or dislike about the game because if they did, they wouldn't fix fix Torghost by adding a fucking uh, point system to it, right? A scoring system to it and they wouldn't fix Torghost by adding cosmetics to it. This is not how you fix it. The gameplay loop is still shit. These are still world quests now just with rewards attached to them. So basically what Blizzard is trying to do here is they're trying to force players into Torghast to prove to them how wrong they were about Torghast, which feels sometimes like that's the only move Blizzard has. It genuinely feels as if that's the move that Blizzard takes with almost every single one of their systems. I don't know if, you, if, if I'm the only one that feels this, but when I look at Blizzard and how they, they interact and invent their systems, it's almost always a case of this is a shit system. How is Blizzard going to force me to do it? And then they force you to do it in, in some sort of fucking attempt to prove that you were wrong in the first place and that it is actually fun. They're literally holding the gun to your head going, you're having fun, right? Yeah. Yeah this is great uh, thank you that, that's literally what it is Torghast should lose soul ash 100 there should be no soul ash it should be made far harder far more difficult far more floors you should be able to get stupidly overpowered um that's what Torghast should be you want to make Torghast fun you make it stupid because stupid is fun from there you sort of fix the small issues the players may or may not have some of these shoulders look boss by the way i'm looking through them i love some of the colors uh, some of them look really good some of them look really shit but at the end of the day this is Blizzard's answer to fixing the, the biggest issue the players have in the game, and they can't seem to understand why they're losing players. That's, that's the funny thing to me. After all this time, Blizzard doesn't seem to understand why they're down 11 million players. It's not rocket science. Every streamer, every YouTuber, and every single person in their communities have been literally pointing out the issues within World of Warcraft for years now and blizzard just keeps going what they're making memes of torgos this is actually something that i'm borrowing from apocalypse here there's some old fuck like some boomer at blizzard that goes well they're making memes about torgos that must mean they like it because memes mean you like something right they're making memes about world quests much mean they like it let's give them more of that shit it's it, blizzard is literally taking what players are saying and just going the opposite direction every single fucking time and you wonder why people are going no nah, i'm done i'm done with this this is this is bullshit I'll, I'll end my rant on this blizzard have somehow gone completely the wrong direction with every asset of their game when it comes to game design the kiss abbreviation is very important keep it simple stupid that's what every game designer that has success in the game designing industry, they understand this simple premise. Keep it simple, stupid. That's it. That's all you need to do. Keep gameplay fun, engaging, and as stupid and easy as possible, and people will have stupid fun in your game. On the lore side, however, 
right? That's where you need intricacy. When it comes to story, you want to make it intricate. You want to make it deep. You want to have, you want the story to have weight and it needs to really pull the player in. What did Blizzard do? They went, lore, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. This is why every single expansion, the lore ends in a way that makes players go, the fuck is this? Look at all of the things that all of the speculators have said. This, every single speculator that I watch came up with a better way of ending the fucking expansion than Blizzard did, right? Because myself, Paramount, Balilar, we go into silly endings for the game, right? Things that would be so cool to witness, but Blizzard goes, keep it simple, stupid. People can't follow deep stories, so we're just going to give them an end to the Loyalist campaign that is basically you're just walking away and going, uh, am I no longer loyal? Because I didn't really see a problem with that. Like, whatever Savannah's did there, I was fine with it. So, oh, I'm no longer a loyalist. Okay, this doesn't make any sense to me, but fine. I, I guess we'll accept it. And then when it comes to game design, Blizzard goes, right, this needs to be as intricate and difficult as humanly fucking possible to the point where we ourselves can't actually fix the game because of all of the fucking systems that we've invented to put into this game. And I'll borrow one last thing, and this I'll borrow actually from Asmongold. Uh, Blizzard identifies problems that players do not have and come up with fixes that players do not want for the problems that the players didn't have in the very fucking first place. This is Blizzard's biggest issue. They identify problems that players do not have, right? We don't have a problem here, Blizzard. We're okay with this. In Alpha, this is the best example I have of this. In Alpha, people were doing Torghast, and they were loving it. People were fucking loving Torghast on Alpha. Blizzard identifies a problem that players do not have. The players are not saying that this is a shit system. The players are not saying that Torghast will not work. The players are saying this is great. More of this. We want this, please. You had people like, uh, what's his name? The, the, the guy that streams a lot of Diablo. Um, I fucking can't remember his name now. It's just completely blank. But you had someone like that spending literally 10, 15 hours a day day quinn that's the one uh, you had quinn spending 10 15 hours a day right playing torghost on the alpha loving every moment of it blizzard goes oh shit there's a problem in torghost players are going no 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 problem it's all good no no there is a problem you'll understand in a moment uh here let, let us fix this for you wait blizzard this is shit now we don't like this no no we fixed your problem but that no, this is the problem that we have. This is the problem. Yeah, yeah, and we fixed it. No, no. Torghast is the problem. Yeah, we fixed the problem. No, the fix is a fucking problem. You've fucked it up. You, you did make a good movie, and then you fucked it up. This is Blizzard. This is Blizzard in a fucking nutshell. Every single time they come up with something really cool, they, they fuck it up. And then we're with, they give us the fucked up version, and the good version is just sort of you're on the boat looking back at the, the fucking shore and the good version is sort of waving you, crying, and you're looking back going, fuck, well, take me back to shore. I don't like this fucking boat. This is a stupid boat. I'll be on the shore, please. It's insane. I don't know what Blizzard is doing. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't understand what Ian is doing half the fucking time and why he's doing the shit that he's doing. Why not just listen when the players tell you it's fun? Uh, why are you creating these problems that doesn't exist and then fixing it with things we don't want? Uh, that's what Blizzard does at the moment. That's why Blizzard is losing 11 million players over the last three years. And that's, that's a big chunk of people. Uh, for anyone that sort of thinks that maybe 9.1 is going to fix it, I highly doubt it. Uh, I've been playing 9.1 on the PTR, and I can tell you now, Corthia is shit. Because all Blizzard is going to add to Corthia is more rewards. That's how they're going to get you to go into to uh, into Corthia. It's shit, by the way. There's nothing fun there. It's very small. It's very uninspiring. It, it really doesn't blow you away. Corthia isn't that great. Uh, the more, not that great. Um, the more could have, again, could have been very good. Obviously, Blizzard had to fix that uh, because it was too good. Um, I don't know. Like, I'll just say this to you guys. I'll, I'll end this entire rant on this because I've been going for 26 fucking minutes. 
But I'll, I'll say this. I sometimes wonder if Ian and the rest of the Blizzard team isn't working for Mike Morheim. Like, maybe Mike Morheim told Ian and the Blizzard team, listen here, fuck this game. Like, literally drive it into the ground. And then once it's worth nothing, I'm going to buy it and we'll restart it at Dreamhaven. Right? That way, it's fixed. That's legitimately sometimes the only thing I can think of. That, that's sometimes I'm looking at what they're doing and I'm going, this must be insider trading. Like, <laughs> these guys are, are, are the enemy. It's... Uh, <laughs> Because what what else is leading them here? Like that, it is the dream playing Earth. You're very correct. Every every one of us wants this. The problem is just how how are we getting this? Because it just it doesn't make sense what Blizzard is doing. Half the time I'm legitimately sitting here going, okay, this makes no fucking sense. But okay, I guess we're gonna do this anyways. Anyways, that's the end of my rant. I don't want to go off on a tangent the whole time on Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, because I do actually think Shadowlands is, has a lot of potential, and I think it can really live up to it. I did not think that of BFA. Uh, BFA had no potential. BFA was just an, an absolute dark shit expansion. Uh, BFA was the was Blizzard fixing fixing all of the problems in Legion, and then employing uh, the fixes in BFA. Uh, and as we've already discussed, these are generally very shit. So, yeah, uh, personally, didn't think BFA had a chance. It was just a shit expansion all through. Shadowlands, I think, does have a chance. But I think if you if you want to play Shadowlands, wait until 9.3. Let the rest of us, uh, as Balila would say, let the rest of us alpha and beta test this shit for you. Um, we're happy to pay our money and, and keep testing it so that in 9.3, you can come back and, oh my god, uh, what a great game. I, I, I can't believe that, that, that Blizzard had made such a great game. What was everyone complaining about? We were complaining because we were fixing the game for you. Which is basically, you know, that's, that's going to happen. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, that's it. What do you guys think? 